Mr Speaker, and it should proceed. I call Ian McKelvey. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And, uh, um, it's a pleasure for me to take a short call on this uh, uh, exclusive economic zone and continental shelf environmental effects amendment bill, one of which I didn't sit on the select committee of, uh, but, um, but it does affect an area that I have a specific interest in. And I, I suppose I'm quite relieved, really, that, um, that I spend my life looking forward, not backwards. I don't think there's much point in looking back, but, uh, but I did want to briefly outline um, a couple of issues that have been raised in the course of the um, speeches, and one of them by um, the Honourable David Parker, where he talked about the challenges that he has with uh, uh, rules being slightly different, whether we're in uh, the New Zealand or, or outside the New Zealand um, economic zone and, and, or in New Zealand territorial waters. And I thought that made a bit of sense, because if you think about the area of interest I've got, particularly around aquaculture and, and, the, and the things that happen with the fishing industry, there's a, there's a high likelihood in due course that that you could have consents being applied for that, that are, um, or, or use applications being made for, um, for factors that are, con that, are, that, are, that are certainly affected by both of those areas of interest. And I, and I think there was a lot of sense in what um, John Will David Parker said about um, trying to rationalise that sort of uh, um, challenge that we have with our, um, with our current legislation. The other thing of course, that this, uh, this particular clause does and the bill does. It has a significant impact on, on the way we do consent um, uh, aquaculture particularly and how we uh, then recover those costs. And I think the encouraging thing for me in this bill was the fact that, that uh, they, uh, the authorities or the government has to give an accurate, um, or the consenting um, authority, I guess, has to give an accurate view of what those costs might be. And of course, that's quite challenging, as they, as they are. Uh, some of these applications are very expensive, but it will be reassuring for those applicants to know that they have the opportunity uh, uh, to at least get some sort of an estimate of that cost, and I guess hold that consenting authority to account later on if that cost is um, is not um, necessarily adhered to. The other thing I think that's interesting in the course of this bill, and, I, and it doesn't apply to this part of the bill, but if you look back at history, it shows how important it is uh, to put complicated pieces of legislation and even simpler pieces of legislation through the select committee processes because it's so easy for mistakes to be made and we've seen a number of times in my time in this, um, in, in this uh, place where we've had to bring legislation back to the House and only the other day we were talking about local government legislation where we have um, um, challenges with legislation that, that, that for setting rates and things like that where they're not set. Um, properly and have to come through the House to be reviewed. So I think that this is probably just epitomise the importance of putting all legislation through the select committee process. Uh, I don't think there's an excuse for not doing that. Uh, and even when we do put it through the select committee process, it's still possible, and, and, and no matter how diligent and how long it's there for, it's still quite possible for us to make or, or for this uh, mistakes to be made in the course of that implementing that legislation. So. So, uh, Mr Speaker, I won't uh, waste the time of the House any further. I think it's, um, it's important that we do have these sorts of pieces of legislation, that we have them in the order they should be, that they're correct. And I also think that it's important that we look to the future around this type of legislation and think as to how we might review it in the future, because there's no question it will need reviewing in the future. And I don't know that we have our environmental legislation in the right space at all in New Zealand, uh, and it will be interesting to see where future um, governments get to with that. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, this is a split call, five minutes. Dr Deborah Russell. Uh, Mr Speaker, we're, we're talking about the exclusive...